Hello and welcome back to another episode of RC Icons. So in this episode, it's going to be part two to our Dyna Blaster build. So in this episode, we're going to finish off this truck. Um, in the last episode, part one, we built the entire chassis um, from a new unbox kit. So obviously everything is brand new. We did put a steering servo in there and we put a pink Acto Power motor in there because we're going to run this truck. Hooray, running video coming. Yeah, we're going to run this truck. Um, so that's going to be fun. But in this video, we need to get it finished off. So what we have left after the first video is we need to get the wheels and tires mounted. So we haven't done that yet. We need to get tire writing done. Um, I'm going to do the tire writing in silver. Uh, I think that will look cool with the uh, silver bars in the back. I think it'll help complement it. And uh, so we're going to get that done. And then we're going to get it painted up in decals. So we'll get this thing finished off in this video. And then part three will be running video. Um, which will be cool. I'm excited to run this truck. I think it'll be fun. Especially with it being on the Dynastorm chassis. Um, I think it's going to be an epic run. So everything is ball raced. It's completely, you know, ready to go. Shocks are oil filled. Um feels great everything feels awesome diff feels awesome this has the multi-disc um, clutch system in it where it's got uh, I believe it's four discs or five discs um, maybe five friction pads and uh, or four friction pads and five plates so definitely you know the uh, the cats meow as far as the vintage two-wheel drives um, you know, went from the Astute gearbox to the TTC to the MDC. And this, you know, is post-211. Um, so, obviously, you know, it's got some R&D into it. And it should be for make for an epic run. So, let me bring the camera over. We'll take a quick look at the chassis. We'll take a look at the body and decals. And uh, the paint that's going to be required. There's four different paints for this truck. Um, so, it's not just a quick one color pass over. It's going to take a little bit of time. Uh, but I think it's worth it. It's uh, it's a metallic red and um, I think the decals along with that red just set this truck off. But the back of the truck definitely has some work involved with masking um, to get the bars silver and then the deck black. So let me bring the camera over. We'll take a look at what we have in store for us and uh, we'll take it from there. All right, so now that I have you back, we'll take a look at this thing. I've got the body on backwards. Huh. It's not even really set up yet. I gotta cut it out. Um, so we've got our tires. You can see this super gripper running along the top. There's some not faint numbers on the bottom, but my hands aren't gonna do that. So we're gonna go with silver, ultra fine tip, sharpie paint pen. We'll get the super gripper on the fronts and the rears. It's got the rib spike truck tires. And then I think the silver is going to look awesome with the silver wheels. So that's the wheels. Uh, the body. So the body, when we look at the manual, we've got four different colors going on here. So the main body of the truck is metallic red. i got to start using my index finger. I noticed in my previous videos I'm always using my middle finger and I'm flipping you guys off the whole time. So we're using PS15 metallic red for the main part of the body. The back of the truck, the bars are, actually it's gunmetal, PS23. I brought up PS12, but it's gunmetal. Um, I may do it in silver or light gunmetal. Um, we'll have to see, because I want to try to get some of the silver from the wheels and the tires. I'm trying to get, get it to, to, to match here. So I'll have to look at what the, the PS23 looks like in gunmetal. The deck is black, and then the back, as you can see right here, the back and then the front is PS6 yellow. So there is a fair amount of masking involved, um, but it's worth it. And you can see there's lines in the body. So this will be yellow in the front right here, or it might even come up higher. It might just get masked right across the front just above the bumper yeah it does the back you can see this line very faintly 
So that's the masking line for the yellow. Um, so order of service is going to be the silver first. Then it's going to be the black. Then it's going to be probably... I'm not sure if I'm going to do the red first or the yellow first. I may do the red first and then and then finish it off with the yellow because I have a feeling if I do the yellow and then I put the red on, the red might show through a little bit. Or I'll put the yellow on and then I'll back it in silver or white and then put the red on. Maybe I'll do that. Um, but we'll have to just take it step by step. But first step is going to be cutting it out. We've got window masks, so that's nice. It should make it a little bit easier. And then when we get the decals, we've got our regular decals, which is just missing the MDC one that's on the, the uh, clutch cover. Um, so we've got our regular decals, which are just absolutely awesome. And then we've got our metallic decals. So we've got our grill, our rear window, our visor, and then there's two stripes that go along the bottom of the skirts. Um, so yeah, this truck is going to look sick when it's done. Unfortunately, when I do go to run it, it's getting a crap stadium thunder body put on it. Um, just because I, and I'm taping the whole bottom of the truck because when this is done, I want it to be a shelf queen, but I want to give you guys a running video out of it too. And it's going to a dirt track. So I really don't want it to get scratched up a little bit here and there, I guess wouldn't be the end of the world, but I'm going to tape the bottom of the arms. I'm going to tape the whole underneath of the truck, um, just to protect it. So step one is cutting out the body. So let's get that done. And then I'll bring you back when the body's fitted to the chassis and, uh, and we'll go from there. So I figured I would bring you back and show you uh, what a whole roll of 10 millimeter to Maya masking tape looks like. <laughs> People are going to be screaming in the comments saying, why didn't you use a bag? I get it. I understand. No need to even write it. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I understand. There's easier ways. So I've got the bars masked off. Um, I'm going to spray those first. Like I said, the box art is, uh, PS 23 gunmetal. Um, I'm really thinking silver cause I want to try to tie the silver wheels and the silver tire writing to the, to the body. Um, so these are just alcohol prep wipes. So after I got it masked, I didn't even put the window masks in yet because sometimes when you put too many layers of paint on the window masks, they start to ripple. Um, so I'm going to wait. So my intention, so I'm just going to take alcohol wipe here and just clean up the actual bar sections. Just because I had my hands all over this thing masking it off. These things are awesome. You get a box of 100 for, I don't even know, it's a couple bucks. It's not expensive. But it just uh, it just evaporates, um, and it does a good job. And it will take paint off. So you, if you're like, I'll paint the silver, and I'll use these again before I paint the black. You just if you go over it quick, and you're not rubbing real hard, it'll clean the surface, but it won't take the paint. Um, so you'll see. So my intention here, and I'm I don't know if it'll I'll be able to pull it off. I'm going to paint the silver or the gunmetal, whichever color I end up going, and then I'm going to try to cut the bed out with my craft knife, peel that mask off, shoot that, and then um, at that point, I'll probably, I feel like I need to spray the yellow last. I'll probably, at that point, take the whole thing off, mask the yellow, put the window masks in, spray the whole thing red, and then at that point, I can take the masks off and spray the yellow, and then I can back it with either silver or white over the red and the yellow, um, just to help it pop. But I think that's probably the best order of service for me. Um, so you guys haven't seen it on yet. Let me just take my reamer here real quick, even though I... Just pop these holes, I can always throw... Throw a little bit more masking on there. Just so that you guys can kind of see it in place. 
see if I can get it to come through. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. So that's it in place. Looks good. I haven't put the wheels and tires on it yet, but you know, it's all cut to the cut lines. We may have to take a little bit more of this front edge off just because it, it's, uh, I don't need the stand. It's, uh, right, it's right up against the arm. You can see it's right up against the arm. Now it doesn't interfere with the arm. It like bottom, the arm bottoms out right when it's about to hit the body. It's like that on both sides. You can see the screw head is just about touching. So I may have to round this corner out just a little bit more. But I'm going to get the silver sprayed on. And then uh, I'll probably cut the mask out. And I'll show you that real quick before I shoot the black. And um, I may even take you downstairs and, and show you painting. I've had some people in the comments ask, how come people don't ever show painting? I don't know. Um, it's probably because... Everybody does it different and you know, I know my painting area is probably not the best Photogenic area in my house. It's down in my basement and it's a complete disaster down there But I'll bring you down there and show you anyways. I'll shoot the silver um, I'm gonna spray some PS 55 on there first Which is a uh, flat clear The reason for that is it it helps to seal the masking tape so if, if paint's going to wick under the tape, it's going to wick under clear first. And then, uh, and then bef before you spray the silver, it's just a tip that I learned a long time ago. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but it's worth, it's worth a couple little blasts of the clear. You just literally just... And, and if it's going to wick, it'll wick the clear. And it will seal that tape. And then you go over it with the silver. And then when you pull your protective film off, the outside of it it doesn't show flat because of the polycarbonate so yeah I'll probably do that um, so yeah let me shut this down I'll drag you downstairs for you it'll be instantaneous for me it'll be a few minutes and uh, I'll show you my technique I mean it's just painting it's literally you know ch -ch -ch. thank you very much but I'll show it so two seconds I'll be right back I told you it wasn't glamorous there's not even a whole lot of light down here. <laughs> but I'm not a professional painter, and you know what? It works for me. So, PS55, flat, clear for polycarbonate. So I just want to make sure that there's nothing from the alcohol wipe on there. So I'm literally just going to take take the flat clear and I'm just going to shoot just a light coat. That's it. We're done with that. So we're going to let that dry and then I've got uh, so this is this is the PS23 gunmetal. You can see it's really dark. This is light gunmetal. And then... I'm professional. There's your silver, right? So, the light gunmetal is obviously lighter than the... Or the silver is lighter than the light gunmetal. So... I think I'm gonna go with silver because I really want I really want to bring I really want to bring that uh, that silver from the wheels and the tire riding up to the truck I think it'll look good so let me let I'm gonna let this dry for I don't know 20 minutes or so and I'll bring you back and we'll shoot the silver all right the flat clear is dry so now I'm gonna hit it with the silver sorry for the noise with the silver. You don't need to soak it, just nice easy coat. 
Great. So we're going to let that dry and then we're probably going to hit it with one more coat. So I'm going to bring you back when, uh, when I'm upstairs and I've got the tape cut off for the black and I'll show you the silver done. So the bars came out awesome. I did go around and just kind of clean them up just a hair. There was no leaking. The, uh, the clear trick worked great. There was no bleeding. Um, I got nice, nice crisp lines you can see. Um, so yeah, I just, just cleaned it up a little bit with a little bit of polycarbonate cleaner just to make sure. Um, any of the stuff that I cleaned up was more masking, not leaking. And then uh, I just wiped the whole inside down with uh, alcohol wipes. So you can see there's, there's some mold and dirt and crap, but it's on the protective film on the outside. It's not, it's not on the inside, obviously. So I'm going to head back downstairs and shoot the black. Um, I'll bring you back down so that you guys can see that. Um, just cause I told some viewers that, uh, I'd show some painting and then I've got one coat of the silver on the wheels, right? So we'll get, we'll just keep chugging away here and get another coat of the silver on the wheels. There's small little numbers at the bottom. I don't know if you can see it. I, my hands aren't steady enough for doing small numbers, raised numbers like that. They just aren't. Uh, I commend the, the people that can get that kind of stuff done, but I don't know if they use a, a finer tip. But even this being a, what is it? It's a extra fine point. I don't know if they make a, a finer point than this, but even that is, is hard to get into some of these tires on the Super Gripper. You end up having to go back around and, and scratch a little bit of the paint off if it comes outside the edges. But uh, tire writing is not, definitely not my uh, expertise. Um, I manage to get it done. I wish all the tires were like Marui tires. But, uh, you know, I do the best I can with what I have. Uh, and it is what it is. Uh, I'm really my worst critic. You know, those, I think that came out perfect. You know, sometimes it works good and other times... The paint just starts flowing so fast that you just can't, you can't keep it in the ridges, you know. So, in my hands, after 20 years of construction, the junk. Um, but, so let's head downstairs and uh, we'll get the black on the back and uh, we'll just keep plugging away. Once the black is done, we're going to rip all this masking off. We'll get the window decals in. We're going to mask off the yellow, which is basically the front grill and bumper and then... There's a mask line that carries around the back, and there's a section of yellow in the back. So we'll get that masked off. We're going to shoot the whole body red, and then we're going to put the yellow on at the end, and then we're going to shoot the whole thing white, and then we're going to shoot the whole thing black again. So a lot of paint. So we're back in the dungeon. Actually, I'm going to hit this with just a little bit more clear. Around the outside edges, just to try to keep that black. I'm wanting to run underneath. So that's it. I just went around the edges where the masking tape is. I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm gonna let that dry. I'll bring you right back. We'll hit it with the black. All right, so we're ready for the black. Now, I'm going to do a real light coat. Because even though I sprayed the clear, I don't want any of this to wick under that masking. So, nice light coat around the mast areas. And we're going to let that dry. And then we're going to come back and, and do heavier coats from there. So, just a couple blasts around the mast areas so that we don't have too much paint. In a spot where that clear went we don't want it to wick under that masking so that's it literally just a nice light nice light coat just around the masking area so that that paint doesn't have an opportunity to wick so i'm going to let that dry and then i'm going to bring you back and i'll blast it over probably two more times and then that's it we're going to unmask this whole thing get the window masks in get the yellow masked off 
and paint the red. All right, that first coat of black is nice and dry now. Sorry for the noise. So now we're just gonna paint it like we normally paint it. So now we have a nice even coat. Looking good. I think it's looking good. It doesn't look like there's too much leaking going on. Might have to clean it up a little bit, but you just never know with paint. It is what it is. We should have enough black to finish this and that tin. And uh, I've got a bunch more anyways. One thing I'm definitely not lacking is paint, so we'll let that dry and we'll hit it one more time and then we'll peel all that masking off a whole roll of 10 millimeter. <laughs> so last coat of the black, third coat. And I, I don't, I'm not afraid to go heavy on the last coat because by now all that masking is sealed up. So I can see that I'm going to need to clean the back line up just a little bit, but that's masking line, um, not wicking line. The silver looks awesome still. So we're going to let that dry and we'll pull the masking off. We're going to clean it up. Sorry for me itching my nose, um, being down in the basement and spraying spray paint. It, uh, gets to me a little bit but uh yeah i'm gonna get let this dry unmask it get it cleaned up and then i'm gonna get the yellow masked off and then i'll bring you back to see it um, before we put the red on all right so i have you back in the dungeon the black came out perfect you can see the bars i've got nice crisp lines i've got the yellow masked off front and back and then just before I, uh, I paint, I always, always, always just go back over my masking just one more time and get your fingernail in there and really crease those edges down, especially on the curved masking tape. Um, I don't know why, but the curved masking tape I always have issues with uh, more than anything else. So just a, as a safeguard. I got my window masks in and then I wiped everything down with an alcohol wipe. Now again, PS55 flat clear. I'm just going to hit those mask lines. Just to try to seal that off with a clear. That way if it's going to wick, hopefully it will wick the clear and not the red. That's it. We're going to let that dry and then I'll bring you back for the red. And uh, once the red is done, we'll pull the masks, hit it with yellow, and then we're going to black the, uh, back the whole thing with white or silver and then black for a final color. So still a bunch left to go. So I apologize, the last section of film, uh, dropping my body, last section of film, for some reason it didn't film. So my first coat was just a real light coat of the PS15, just around the masking area, so you can see it's real light, like literally real light. We're going to do another real light coat, and I was saying in the last segment that this this PS15 is is an awesome color this metallic red and I don't remember 
Tamiya ever really using it, Tamiya, sorry, Tamiya ever really using it on anything else. We all know PS16, which is a Vanny Blue. And that color looks awesome. But I was saying, I bet the Astute would have looked pretty killer in PS15. So, just a real light coat. We don't want to get too crazy. You get too crazy with paint, that's when you run into trouble. It, painting is all about patience, right? It takes forever to mask, and then you're going to try to blow it all over in one coat of paint. It's not, it's, <laughs> it's not really how it's supposed to go. And you you know, check your work. Make sure that your tape isn't lifting because of the paint. Like I can see that that's that curve masking tape just always wants to come up because it's so stretchy. Might be a little bit of leakage there, but if we have to, we'll clean the line up. And I know the decals cover the seam, so it's not the end of the world. But like I was saying, we spend all that time masking, right? We're gonna get the lines perfect. Um, at least I do. I try to. I try to really just take my time. You go through all this effort of building a car. You're gonna paint the body four different colors. You're gonna take all that time to try to get everything looking good, and then you're just gonna rush through the the actual spraying part of it to get on to the next color. And and it's really hard at the end. You know, you've got a day and a half. I've got a day and a half into this body at this point, right? So it's not all day every day, but, you know, enough hours to, to call it a day and a half. And then and then you just, you're just going to blast over it because you're impatient at the end and you just want it to be over. I totally understand, but that's that's when you're going to screw it up, you know? You, so all that time that you put in was for nothing. Um, so just take your time. So yeah, a couple more coats. I'm not going to film the next couple of coats, but you know, probably two or three more coats like that. Get a nice, good, even coat of that metallic red. Then we're going to pull the masking off, and I'll bring you back to shoot the uh, shoot the yellow. All right. So third day on painting and masking. So the red is on. Came out awesome. Nice crisp lines. See if I can show you. So those are the masking lines on the body and then in the front. So nice laser straight lines. So the last real color is uh, PS6 yellow. The only masking left is the window masks. So no need to clear anything at this point. And then the decals cover a lot of the seams. So uh, we should be pretty good. So I do have one. Let's see if I can pick it up here. You can see right there, there's a little bit of black. So I picked that the, the uh, protective cover to see if it's underneath, and it is underneath. So I'm gonna have to fix that, but I don't wanna, I don't wanna, after I pulled the masks, I don't wanna clean that off to spray red, or I'm gonna end up losing my clean surfaces. So I'll spray the yellow first, then I'll come back, clean that off. I'm going to spray the yellow and then I'm going to spray the white. At least get the white over the yellow. So that then I can come back, clean that off, shoot that red. And at that point, if the red gets on the white, it's not a big deal. If the red gets on the yellow, it could, it could make the yellow look a little bit, a little bit funny. So, so yeah, I'm gonna, I need to go get an alcohol wipe. There's a little bit of residue from the tape on this. I did clean it off, but it's from the polycarbonate cleaner. I can see it. So yeah, let me go get an alcohol wipe real quick and clean this up one more time. And then uh, I'll get you right back on to shoot the yellow. All right, so the yellow's done. Seeing the light at the end of the tunnel here. Now I need to blast it over in white. Sorry for the noise. I need to blast it over in white so I can make that repair on the red. I don't want to get red on the yellow. So
for now. Probably getting my phone covered in white overspray here. For now, I just want to get the yellow covered. Gotta get my fan back on. I have to shut my exhaust fan off when I film so that you guys can hear. So let me get my fan back on because the, the night air is blowing the, the paint back into the house. And I'm going to have a very unhappy wife. I'm going to make the repair and then I'm just going to blast it over in white, finish it off, and then I'm going to blast it over in black. I think I've got we've gotten our point across with the paint. And I'll bring you back to uh, peel the protective film off, give you the end result. All right, so I just rubbed off. I don't even know if I'll be able to show you. I just rubbed off that black spot and that red spot. So now I'm just going to blast back over it with red. That should fix our problem here. I'm tempted to just soak it because I want to be done. Already looks better more black spot so I'm gonna do that probably two or three times and then I'm gonna hit the whole thing with white but I just wanted to show you the repair and I'll show it to you after I pull the film off all right so last I left you I got that repair fixed looks perfect um, went over the whole thing with white and then I went over the whole thing with black so I think we're ready to to take this protective film off. So there is a black spot here, but that gets covered with a decal. I looked into it. So we're just gonna pull this off. And I've got some black. Got some black right there, but I think the decal is going to cover that as well. And then I got some black on the outside right here from when I sprayed it. But overall, it looks gorgeous. Right? So we'll get the window masks out now. And we'll decal it up and if there's any spots that that need to be addressed after decals I'll do that afterwards it's funny because I knew there was a lot of a lot of work to this body being four different colors but uh I never would have thought it was that much work. It's uh I was talking to Glenn and he's like, "Yeah, I've done I've done that body a couple of times." Um meaning he's done two Stadium Thunders and it's the identical body. So the Stadium Thunder shares the body, although the colors are different. But masking off the uh, bars in the back and then I know the Stadium Thunder has yellow a yellow bumper um, I don't know if it actually it is just the bumper so there's no masking in the back this one's definitely harder um, than the Stadium Thunder but it you know I mean it doesn't get any better <laughs> it's awesome you know it came out it came out really, really nice. So we'll get it decaled up, and then I'll bring you back. And again, uh, you know, you get your silver tire writing. Um, we'll get it decaled up, and then I'll uh, I'll bring you back for the final product. And uh, if there's anything that needs to be fixed, I'll fix it. But other than that, we're coming to an end. So that's the first 12 decals on. Um, they look awesome.
so obviously coming over all of the body lines you really have to just take your time and and work the decal essentially from the top down creasing in with your fingernail and then bringing it back over making sure the bottom doesn't stick creasing it in with your nail again but there's there's one in the front and then there's a little piece here and then there's this section here I'm going just by the numbers start with number one and move on right so yeah that that's all of the essentially the striping part of it so the rest of it now is essentially the car and then um, the uh, the sponsorship and then the names um, so we're just gonna keep pluck plugging away here and uh, I'll bring you back once it's done at this point I just wanted to show you the stripes going on um, I haven't had to clean anything up as far as any paintwork this decal covered it, the mess that was in the back here and there's still some sponsorship going on too that's gonna cover it up some more so yeah, we're in good shape so far. We're just going to keep plugging, plugging away. Phew! And that's it. A lot of decals. It came out... Uh, it came out awesome. I'm extremely happy with it. So, there's just a ton of decals on this thing. By the time you get all the sponsorship, and then it's decals over decals, you've got your metallic decals. So yeah, it looks great. Let me see if I can get it on here. So there is absolutely no way <laughs> we're running this thing with this body on it. It just looks way too nice. So these are the only decals I have left that are actually on. And those are obviously tire riding decals. Say hello to James. <laughs> those are tire riding decals. And I already did the tire riding in silver. So I think the white would just look a little hokey. So we're going to leave those off for now. We might save those for another truck another day. So let me get the wheels and tires put on it. And then uh, I'll bring you back for a closing. And that's going to wrap up this, uh, this Diner Blaster project. Cheez-Its. <laughs> Got to eat while you work. And it's done. Holy smokes. I thought I'd never get through the body. What did I think of it? Well, I think... Honestly, the whole the whole build was absolutely uh, epic from start to finish. Um, you know, you get into a you start a project like this, and you you know it's obviously going to be um, an, an an epic truck, right? So it's on a Dynastorm chassis. So right from the get go, you know that it's going to have some performance to it. I've never built a Dynastorm. I've never built a Dyna Blaster, so it was all new to me, which was great. Um, you get through the chassis build itself, um, and then you know you get into the body, and as although it, it's a ton of work, you know the end result is just absolutely stunning. So this is the first stadium truck I have built um, in the collection. It's the first stadium truck I've built, um, but it's the first one that I have built in the collection. So we still have the stadium Blitzer, the stadium Thunder, and the Blitzer Beater, Beetle to build, but those are all on the Falcon chassis, and they're not going to be anywhere near um, the kind of performance that this thing is. So from start to finish, it was just an absolute pleasure. You know, the, the diff feels great. I'm excited to, to use that uh mdc slipper clutch so like i said in the last clip we, we won't use this body to run it i've got a new set of wheels and tires um for the dyna blaster that i had just bought and i i buy parts before i own cars as crazy as that sounds i do it a lot um i have new x10 decals before i ever had a predator x10 um in the event that i get the car 
I have certain bits already or parts already um, to do a restoration. So I had bought a Dyna Blaster body set long before I bought a kit because I figured at the very least someday I would find either a Dyna Storm or I would find a Dyna Blaster and I would have a new body set for it. So I have a new Dyna Blaster body set that I'm not going to end up using because I have another kit. Um, the other kit will stay in kit form because I love the presentation of it. And now I have one that's built. So that's how my collection works. I have built cars and if the kit had great presentation, then I usually have the kit for it as well. But that Dyna Blaster body, you know, I've got that second set of decals. So I could run this body, but it would mean all that work doing it again. And I don't want to do that. So this, I have a beat up Stadium Thunder that's going to become a giveaway car. Um, I've got new decals for it, original decals. I've got all the parts I need to restore the chassis, but I can't find a Stadium Thunder body set. It's the same body as the Dyna Blaster, so I'll probably steal the body shell out of the Dyna Blaster body kit that I have for that restoration, but I have the original shell that came on that car or truck that I can put on this to run this so I really want to give you a running video of it of this truck and as much as I want I'll tape the whole bottom of the chassis to protect it the best I can I really hope I don't scratch scratch it because I don't I don't want to walk away from it being upset to the point to where I don't do running videos in the future um, I'm doing it for you guys um, I do want to run it because it looks like an epic chassis but I don't I don't want to scratch it. I don't want to destroy it, right? So I'll probably do a little run on on asphalt um, with this body just so that we can kind of get that, you know, see this running around in this state here. Um, but it's not going to be anything crazy. I'm not going to wind it up and start doing speed runs and stuff like that. So we'll see this body move on this chassis, but it's going to be real, real light, real light. And then we're going to put the Stadium Thunder body on it and we'll get the bottom of it all protected and we're going to bring it to my local track and we're going to do just a couple of easy laps. We're not going to kill it. I don't want to be running into the side wall with it and I, I really don't want to destroy this truck, but I want to give you guys what you want. Um, so the same day we're going to run the Dyna Blaster and we're going to run the, the uh, Kyosho Optima Mid Custom Special because that car is wrapping up right now. I usually build cars two at a time. So the Optimum and Mid Custom Special and the Dyna Blaster were kind of built in the same uh, two week period. Um, the chassis were one right after another and the bodies are one right after another. Um, so we'll do the running, running videos at the same time as well. And then the next one on the list is the uh, Ranger F-150. So we're going to dial it back. We're going to go back in time uh, to, to Maya's 27th RC car and we're going to build that F-150. But that's going to end the build videos for the Dyna Blaster. Um, it's probably going to take me a little bit to get out to do the running videos, but be on the lookout um, for those running videos. So um, if you're not already subscribed... To the channel make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on all those notifications so you don't miss the running video of this and uh and also the optima mid custom special that's coming and then um you know like i said the next build is uh the ranger f-150 build so um you're going to want to be subscribed for that build because you just don't see that one getting built new in box you see the other three on that chassis but you don't see that one so let me know in the comments what you thought. I think it's an epic truck. I love the color, PS15. I've never painted it before. That metallic red is gorgeous. It is absolutely stunning. So yeah, let me know in the comments what you think. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.